Hello my people, Finerbub here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're talking about GoPros, specifically the method and equipment I use to record my top to bottom ski runs. So I recently got a comment on one of my skiing videos asking me something along the lines of, how is it possible for you to get these long ski runs all in one shot every time I try to record anything with my GoPro. 30 seconds into the run, the battery will just die from the cold and I can't record anything. So how do you avoid this issue? So I have a few answers to this. First of all, the commenter mentioned that they use the GoPro Hero 8, which as some of you will know, is an older model of the GoPro that has a smaller battery. Once the Hero 9 came out, they released the larger battery with that camera, and in the 9 and the 10, they use this larger battery. So outside of cold weather conditions, the larger battery from the 9 and the 10 does last a lot longer than the old ones from the 7 and 8. But that's not the real reason why I'm able to manage all this in the cold. So when I'm skiing, I ski with a backpack. I don't necessarily recommend skiing with a backpack. It can definitely throw you off balance. It adds, you know, to the weight, your ability to, you know, compensate for that and your turns and everything, it does make a big difference. However, I have found that keeping my GoPro equipment in my jacket pockets just does not suffice in terms of keeping it warm enough to maintain battery life to record these longer ski runs. To address your comment, the main thing that is preventing your batteries from recording a full length run is the cold. You're right about that, 100%. So the way I mitigate this is by putting all of my GoPro batteries into one pocket in my backpack alongside this right here. This is a rechargeable Zippo hand warmer that I bought from REI last year. Uh, it has a few different settings. You know, you can make it warm, warmer, or hot. However, you know, the hotter you set it to, the, the shorter the battery life will last. It also has a USB port if you need to use it to charge your phone because it is a battery. But yeah, essentially, I turn this hand warmer onto the lowest setting so that it lasts the longest. I stick it inside my backpack with the batteries for the GoPro and my other cameras, and I just swap them out throughout the day. The cold still gets to the, the batteries. They still die very quickly. However, with this, you're able to get a lot more juice out of the batteries than you would if you were just trying to warm them up in your pockets or by putting them in the backpack. Another thing I do is I have this Anchor 20,000 milliamp charging bank that I keep in the same pocket with my GoPro dual charger. And so every time I take a battery out of the camera, I immediately put it in the charger, which is in the same compartment of my backpack as the hand warmer. So it's not only warming up, but it's also giving it a little extra juice. Sometimes, especially later in the afternoon in a ski day, the batteries start to cool off a lot quicker just by way of the fact that the camera has been on my helmet the entire day and the camera itself is very cold. So as soon as the warm battery goes in there, the camera itself sucks the warmth out of it and kills the battery quickly. So when that starts to happen, I simply just take the camera off of my helmet and I put it in the backpack when I'm on the chairlift. That little bit of extra warmth just gives it a little bit more juice and I'm able to record for that much longer. That being said, I still miss plenty of shots. There are plenty of ski runs that I've been on that I wish I had recorded but the battery just simply died and you know I wasn't in a position where I was comfortable changing the batteries whether it was in deep snow or my hands were freezing or whatever it was. You know sometimes you just can't get the shot but the more you're able to record especially on a day of skiing when you're kind of just recording passively off of a helmet cam or something like that, you know, the more opportunity you'll have to acquire shots that you might later use. So, you know, for every day of skiing that I do, you know, I sometimes only get one run that's usable. You know, I tend to like to have somebody in the frame the entire time. So sometimes there will be times where I'm ahead of all my friends um, and I'm not getting like what I would deem a aesthetically pleasing shot or one without a subject that draws the eye. So, you know, there are certain things that eliminate these clips from being used on the channel, but yeah, this hand warmer is the gist of how I'm able to record these videos, you know, without the GoPro running out of juice or dying as a result of the cold. So another thing that I want to mention is a little bit about how I film um, and some issues you might run into. So up until you know, recently I've been using, or I guess for the past year or so, starting last summer, I have been using the Hero 9 Black from GoPro. 
Um, this was the first one with the large battery. I did get the Hero 10, but I haven't used it quite as much as the 9, just by way of the fact that I had been keeping the 10 on this tripod to use for handheld shots, and I just left the 9 on my helmet as a POV cam. One thing I will note about filming POV with a GoPro is the shots are made much better by this Max lens mod. This is an accessory that GoPro sells. I think it's about a hundred bucks, but it's basically a replaceable lens that you can put onto the GoPro. You could unscrew this little lens cap here and then screw on the Hero Max mod, which essentially just creates more of a wide angle view. For something like POV shots, it's really important to just have it in that wide angle mode, just because you're not really aiming the camera actively at what you want to shoot. So, you know, in the off chance that your head turns slightly to the side, or if the person you're filming moves over to the side, you know, they'll still be in the shot, especially if you have that max lens mod. The settings I use uh, for filming POV is I put it in super view mode with the maximum amount of stabilization on there. I film in the flat uh, profile, the co flat color profile. I use automatic shutter speed just to compensate for the changing uh, light. I find that works the best. And then I set the ISO maximum to about 1600. I don't like it to go really much higher beyond that because it starts to look really fuzzy and grainy. But yeah, I mean, for POV shots, that's essentially what I do. I also have taped on these little wind muffs here so the audio doesn't sound quite as bad. I started doing that after I filmed my Mount Snicktail hiking video just because the audio was so overwhelmed by the sound of the wind. So yeah, this mitigates it slightly. You know, you still kind of hear it sometimes, but it definitely is an improvement. I've done that to both of my GoPro cameras here and they're very cheap and easy to put on. It basically comes with like a little circular sticker that you put over the microphone and then you basically stick on this little wind muff thing so that you know you're not covering the microphone with the actual sticker but you're able to block the wind with the uh the fuzzy dead cat as they're called in the industry one thing i will note about the hero 9 i don't know if you guys follow me on instagram or not but if you do you will know that i tore my acl last week at keystone just going down a regular blue run just ate it and yeah, tweaked my knee in a weird way, tore the ACL. Um, I'm going to be getting surgery uh, in a couple weeks, after which it'll be about nine to 12 months recovery period. It's a huge bummer, uh, especially given that it was a season ender for me, just as uh, I felt like I was getting my legs back uh, in my first season here in Colorado. But you know, uh, it is what it is and I'm dealing with it. And yeah, but the reason I bring that up is because I was recording on this Hero 9 when I crashed. However, the Hero 9, at least in my experience, has been known to corrupt video files. A lot of the, the footage that I would have shown you from the demo day that I did at Loveland where I tested out a bunch of skis, that's all corrupted, you know, unviewable on my computer or on the camera. And the same exact thing happened for this run when I crashed. And, you know, I would have loved to have reviewed the footage to just see what I might have done wrong, you know, some something that I could have been more aware of. But I don't know, maybe like the crash jostled the camera enough so that it glitched out. But yeah, I, I essentially could not view the footage. I did some research and I did find a GoPro corrupt file recovery program that I downloaded the free version of, and I was able to recover those clips. However, in the clip uh, where I fall, the camera essentially just glitches 30 seconds before the fall and then like maybe a few minutes afterwards resumed recording. And so I have no footage of the actual fall. I mean, you can see right here, I didn't pay for the software, so I wasn't able to download the footage, but I just took a little video of my computer screen uh, with my phone and you can see that the pixels just glitch and it skips to like several minutes later after I fell, which is super annoying and that shouldn't happen. But yeah, that has been uh, my main gripe with the Hero 9. I mean, people complain a lot about the laggy touchscreen, which is, you know, a concern. The uh, the touchscreen is not very responsive, especially if you're used to your smartphone. Uh, but if, with a little patience, you can make it work fine. And, you know, that was essentially the main reason why I bought the Hero 10 was because, you know, they marketed it as having a much faster processor than the 9, so the touchscreen issues wouldn't be a problem. And I got to say, after uh, all of this, you know, sort of corrupt file glitching that's been going on with my Hero 9, I'm most likely going to be exclusively using the 10 and only using the 9 
9 as a backup before I sell it. But, you know, the settings would be the same on the 9 as on the 10. I ended up putting the max lens mod on the 10 thinking that my knee injury wasn't anything significant and that I'd recover quickly and be able to ski. But, you know, after... Uh, MRI and uh, meeting with the doctors, they have told me that a skiing will only make the injury worse and that, you know, I, I basically need to have surgery if I want to get back to full strength. So yeah, unfortunately, that's uh, reality that I'm experiencing at the moment, but you know, I'll get through it and I'll hopefully be back on the slopes next season. So that's really the gist of it. I mean, I know that this sort of started as just like a little bit of a video addressing a comment about the battery life and GoPros and the cold and all that. But, um, you know, if you're planning on filming with a GoPro or if you already do and you're experiencing some of the issues that I've been experiencing, you know, it, this might be helpful for you. And uh, sorry to uh, drag you into my sorrows there a little bit. But yeah, you'll probably see a lot more of me in here for the time being while I recover, and especially after the surgery in a few weeks. So yeah, just wanted to give you guys a little heads up there uh, with regard to that stuff. But yeah, if you found this video helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Uh, it helps YouTube sort of learn what you like to watch and they're more likely to share it with other people if you hit the thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please do. Oh, and uh, by the way, just so you know, all of the gear, any accessories or equipment that I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below. I have affiliate links with a few companies, so if you want to support production of these videos, you can shop through those links at no extra cost to you. Uh, I just get a small commission from those sales, uh, and it really helps me out, uh, especially in times like this where I'm not able to go to work right away. But yeah, if you would uh, use those links, I'd greatly appreciate it. And be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Alrighty, my people, that concludes today's episode of The Finer Rub Show. If you already have the GoPro Hero 9 or 10, or you've used one of these hand warmers, or if you're experiencing similar issues to what I've experienced, or if you have any other solutions that you could offer to people watching this video, I'd love to have you comment below, especially if you think your insight can help me disprove something that I think I already know. But before you do, I just wanna once again, thank you oh so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you're looking for new gear or planning your next trip, don't let the small details stress you out. Remember, life's an adventure. So relax, breathe in the outdoors, and don't forget to appreciate the finer things. See you out there, people. Peace.